Back on Inside Tennessee, we we'll welcome you to this Sunday morning discussion about what's ahead for the Tennessee legislature. Two members of the Tennessee House of Representatives with us. Gloria Johnson's been in since 2012, on and off. Representative Zachary in since 2015. Let's talk about what you see is the issue that will dominate this session. We'll start again with you, Representative Johnson. Well, for me, it's fixing some things that I think from last time that we have an issue with. The third grade retention bill, folks are very upset about that and I'm seeing agreement on both sides of the aisle there um, women's uh, birth you know women's health care and reproductive rights I think we've got to revisit we've got some dangerous situations there but for me for me the biggest thing right now is the crisis that we have in DCS and we have to do something and we need to do it now let's start there and we'll get to your priorities in a second but I want to dig <coughs> into this because this will have bipartisan interest yes. for sure we are seeing reports of children actually sleeping in DCS offices and that's been going on for not just weeks months but years well but at this level mm -hmm. it's been just a year year and a half something like that and now we've got we've we see that there are kids in hospitals that don't have medical needs to be in hospitals 264 days or more than 260 days 12 kids in hospitals I think right now and imagine the cost of a hospital for over 200 days and so the reality is we have got to do something we've got to do it now i know they're talking about the next budget the 2023 budget we're not going to see those dollars until july these kids cannot continue to be traumatized every single day until July. Strikes We've me got if there ever was an emergency now. or rainy day fund raid, this might constitute Well, or a special session. And, 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 and that's what I said. I'll come back on Thanksgiving Day. I, I said that before. I'll come back on Christmas Day. I'll come back whenever so that we can fix this because we have two billion dollars in reserves and we have 10 billion in surplus okay we let's, can fix this let's give representative zachary a chance to weigh in because he represents the seven out of ten people in the legislature right sure. now which are republicans yes. what is the answer sure so i think it's important to first talk about how we got here one i mean we have a significant drug issue i talked to dcs actually this week and so we have a significant drug issue in this country which right at 40 percent of the children that are being taken it's to really like to re directly related to drugs or alcohol we have a significant breakdown in the family just in society in general so it has created this issue where DCS at any one time will have about 9,000 children in custody and so when some of these reports broke I went to DCS directly and asked some of these questions and they said a common practice is when you pick a child up especially if you pick a child up at night and they have nowhere to place them they have to go to an office but um, I did ask specifically about sleeping on floors and they said every child has a bed, every child has access to a shower, they continue to go to school, and that's directly from DCS and then related to the hospitalization. Right now within the state, you'll at any one time, you'll have four to 12 children in a hospital, typically for acute issues, because if they pick a child up and they have a medical issue, it has to be addressed. The greatest challenge with DCS right now is staffing, because right now I personally know a family who literally just got a placement for a brand new baby and they waited weeks and weeks after they went through the process. The problem with DCS, just like with our hospitals, just like the medical industry in general, is staffing. And with that staffing, we don't pay DCS as much as they can get in the private sector. And that's for that goes for DIDS, that goes for so many areas in state government. And so we have to do a better job of providing a competitive pay structure to increase the staff because that they're having the same problem in any, any entity like DIDS or anybody else within state government. It's the same kind of issue. So to Representative Johnson's point, is a special session something that you see as something you should do and raise those rates right away well the governor's office is working on this now and then we will be back in session within about a month and so that's that will be one of the top priorities is addressing this and having hearings bringing the commissioner in and talking about what steps are they taking and what are the various needs they have just like when TBI comes to us TBI is having the same issue because of the fentanyl that's pouring across the southern border director Roush who most people here would know as chief Roush we have the same the same request from him we have the same request from various departments in government because there's so many of those positions that desperately need to be filled DCS just takes a heightened importance because it has to deal with children so we have to address it and, and DCS was short before COVID before any of these other things and it was a unofficial hiring freeze that let us get to 500 employees short it's not something that happened overnight and the reality is if you talk to DCS workers I've talked to dozens and dozens of DCS workers who left 
because the stress was too much on their mental health, their physical health, and their own families. And they couldn't sacrifice that anymore. They loved the job. They thought they'd be there forever. People two and three years from retirement left because they just couldn't put kids at risk and feel okay about that. But with the caseloads, that's what they had to do. And so <coughs> all the people that have left would come back if we capped caseloads hmm. at the social work standard, which is 12. Which means more workers and which more money. Which means more workers. Mm -hmm. and, and we can do an incremental um, lowering of the cap, but it needs to be a hard cap, not a so round figure like they have Jason, now. Jason, to you, do you think the Republican caucus would be willing to spend more money on what is one of the most serious problems in our state right now. Yeah, oh, without question. Yeah, just like, again, as I mentioned, there are so many governmental agencies that are coming to us because they're losing so many people. This one has it deals directly with children. And so uh, it's something that has to be addressed and it has to be addressed right away. I know and so, you don't speak for all your caucus, but we will hold you, you to hold that me later to when well, there's a vote. As, as a member of the finance committee that represents Knox County, you have my commitment that that will be a top well, priority. Well, I, yeah. I have to say that um, we brought legislation this past session to solve the problem, a case cap of 12. And it was killed in committee on a party line vote. And the, the first thing that the chair said of the committee said, well, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need DCS. And, well, we don't but it's, a it's not in a perfect world. And we just don't have the money. We do actually have that money. Well, we, we, uh, we so, need to pause here. We'll continue this discussion. We want to get to your priorities as well and deal with the education issue. That affects thousands of families as well in this state. We're back with more on Inside Tennessee right after this.